a warm welcome to everyone here tonight as we have our concert of carols followed by our midnight mass. You've received a little folded sheet with details of the carols in it and we've inserted a little bit of congregational participation tonight. So where there are congregational carols, we'll invite you um, to stand and join in those and then sit down and enjoy the pieces sung by the choir directed by our director of music, Ben Newlove, with Ben Banks on the organ. If you are um, going to be leaving after the concert and would like to make a donation to uh, the work of our chosen charities tonight, which is the 999 Club and the St. Alfred School Food Bank, then you can do that on the card reader on the south door or a card reader at the west door or put some money into the basket. So as we prepare for our midnight mass at 11.30, thank you to Ben and Ben and the choir and enjoy our carol.
sure it's there.
I'm going to cut in and welcome all of you to St. Alphage for this Midnight Mass on Christmas Eve. It's wonderful to see so many of you here with us tonight. Everything you need to take part in our service is found in the booklet that you should have received upon arrival. If you don't have one of these booklets, please do feel free to ask one of the stewards at the back of the church. Lastly, just to point out to you that we will be taking a, a collection uh, this evening in support of two very worthy causes, uh, those of the 999 Club and the St. Alphage School Food Bank. Um, so please do support these local um, efforts if you are able to and as generously as you are able to. Um, if you find that you didn't bring any cash with you tonight, don't worry. Uh, there are contactless machines that you can use as you leave um, the service. Um, one is on the south side there by the door and the other is at the back of the church. Again, we're so grateful for your generosity in this season of fellowship and goodwill in the name of our Lord. Thank you very much.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We say together, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Savior of the world. Let us humbly confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against Thee and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve thee in newness of life, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Let us pray. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of thy one true light, bring us, who have known the revelation of that light on earth, to see the radiance of thy heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, as we meet to celebrate the birth of Christ, let us pray that God will bless this crib, that all who worship his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, may come to share his light in glory. God our Father, on this night thy Son, Jesus Christ, was born of the Virgin Mary for us and for our salvation. Bless this crib, which we have prepared to celebrate that holy birth. May all who see it be strengthened in faith and receive the fullness of life he came to bring, who liveth and reigneth now and forever. Amen. Please, would you be seated? A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices, and together they sing for joy. For in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people, and he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, alleluia. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. Amen. It's very good to be worshipping together again in a less distanced way this year. When I stood up here last year, we were uh, fewer in number and masked, and uh, it's great that we can be together like this, and I've missed big celebrations like this. It's lovely from perspective of myself uh, and Reverend Tatty and Reverend Stephen to be in partnership with our colleagues from the old Royal Naval College Chapel. So thank you to Robert for presiding and to Faith and Susan for taking part too. Some of us clergy are members of the union and I was asked this last week whether we would be taking industrial action this Christmas as well. I haven't had a pay offer from the Diocese of Southwark, but we are here tonight in force. I wonder if you have seen or heard one of the large supermarkets Christmas ads this year. You might be fed up of it. I heard it very early on. Britain, it booms. There's a joy shortage. And the clever ad people have produced a cheery like party political broadcast ad promising all sorts of joy in the midst of a cost of living crisis, including more pigs in blankets for more people, more wine at affordable prices, bringing the kids and adults' tables together, 
not entirely sure about that one. And even solving the eternal question that some of us have, when is bin day this week? That would be a miracle, truly. We stand for joy, they say. We are the Christmas party. Well, with all that's going on, I think we've experienced rather a deficit of joy in Britain and further afield. I, uh, our great Greenwich Advent windows have focused this year on the theme from the well-known carol, that phrase, tidings of comfort and joy. And it's wonderful to see the creativity on display again across our community. You can catch them for a week or so more, and I hope you enjoy them. But we can't conjure up a sense of joy at a whim, nor create it artificially. And not even the most clever supermarkets can keep the joy flowing endlessly, whatever the price reductions. In our Old Testament reading, the prophet Isaiah encourages the wayward and downhearted people to audit their lives, to take a spiritual temperature check and get back on the right path. Because across the hills, from a distance, he says, a messenger is traveling to them, bearing good news. Break forth into singing, be joyful, for God is coming to save you and bring peace, he says. We know the story of the nativity well. And there was quite a lot of fear on that Christmas night. The angelic choir appears in full HD color and surround sound to the shepherds in the Bethlehem fields and scares them witless. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. A saviour is born, Christ the world, Christ the Lord. Well, we know that they headed into town, terrified but curious, and that their encounter with Christ turned into the first Christmas party. They were filled we're told, with immense joy. Mary was most likely mortified by the angel Gabriel's message that she was to bear God's son, Jesus, also known as Emmanuel, God with us. Those of us who know her response, that beautiful song called the Magnificat, will know it as a quietly joyful response, not shouting from the rooftops sort of joy, but a heartful expression of gratitude, of hopeful and trusting joy. Perhaps that's more the sort of joy we are nurturing this Christmas. I've been thinking about two people who've died over the last year, and each were joyful individuals in their own ways. Firstly, Queen Elizabeth II, who died in September after 70 years as the monarch of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. She often spoke of her Christian faith, of how it shaped her life, and what a difference being a follower of Jesus Christ made to her. There was in her, I think, a sort of Mary joy. The hopeful, the grateful, the trusting joy. And then, for those of you South Africans amongst us, there's the Arch. Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who died just after Christmas last year. What an ebullient, courageous, charismatic leader of the church and the community in South Africa and a leading light in pursuing truth and reconciliation for his country as it processed the wrongs and abuses of apartheid. Perhaps his was more of the unbridled, full-throated, chuckling shepherd's joy. It's been another 
pretty turbulent year across the world. Some different challenges to what we faced through the pandemic. But all the same, it's been hard and tough for so many. And as I look out tonight, I can see numbers of you who I know I have been involved with pastorally and that we as a community have been involved in supporting and bearing you up in the months that have gone. For some people, the unpredictability of what might lie ahead in the next year is causing quite some anxiety. In our community, I encounter people who are quietly and confidently grateful. They know their gratitude for what God gives us. And your quiet trust and your peace has been an example to many of us this year. Thank you. Christmas, the feast of the birth of Jesus, celebrates that God comes among us as a human and history is changed. We're deeply valued and the message is that all of creation is filled with the divine life. The message is the challenges for you and I to step out, to reorientate the compass of our lives and to embrace that truth. As you go tonight, do take away a copy of Follow the Star. It's a little booklet with 12 short reflections for the 12 days of Christmas. Pick some more up at the back if you'd like one. And if you want to follow up anything you might have read or thought or responded to as a result of that, please do be in touch in the new year. And the Reverends Tatty or Robert and I would be more than happy to have a coffee, have a conversation, to listen, to chat. Whether you're an Elizabeth or a Desmond, let's stand up for joy. Let's spread a bit of joy in our own way this year as the advert bids us and as the gospel bids us. But more than that, we've heard again the stunning words from our gospel reading from, the, from John chapter 1, the beginning of that gospel. Throughout the tumult and the turmoil of many human centuries, even when it's felt to people like the darkness is enveloping us. The light has shone in the darkness and the darkness hasn't overcome it. And as we gather tonight in this church, we've reaffirmed our trust in the promise of Emmanuel. Who is God with us? The Christmas story is a reminder of a simple fact that transcends all race, nationality, and creeds. Each of us have a chance to live as lights in the darkness, right here and right now. Standing alone, sometimes it feels like my little light makes little difference to anyone but me. But multiply it by the millions who want to take back the night and push back the darkness and you and I can be people who help write a new story, a different story, wherever we live or work, whichever communities we're part of. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. So tonight, let us step out to share the light and to be that light. In the words of the arch, the late Desmond Tutu, goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through him 
who loved us. Amen. I invite you to stand as we affirm the faith of the Church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so, in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. For the words, Jesus born of Mary, the response is, be born in us today. Father, in this holy night, your Son, our Savior, was born in human flesh. Renew your church as the body of Christ. Jesus, born of Mary, be born in us today. In this holy night, there was no room for your Son in the inn. Protect with your love those who have no home, and all who live in poverty. Jesus, born of Mary, be born in us today. In this holy night, Mary, in the pain of labor, brought your son to birth. Hold in your hand all who are in pain or distress. Jesus, born of Mary, be born in us today. In this holy night, your Christ came as a light shining in the darkness. Bring comfort to all who suffer in the sadness of our world. Jesus, born of Mary, be born in us today. In this holy night, the angels sang peace to God's people on earth. Strengthen those who work for peace and justice in the world. Jesus, born of Mary, be born in us today. In this holy night, shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy. Give us grace to preach the gospel of Christ's redemption. Jesus, born of Mary, be born in us today. In this holy night, strangers found the holy family and saw the baby lying in the manger. Bless our homes and all whom we love. Jesus, born of Mary, be born in us today. In this holy night, heaven is come down to earth, and earth is raised to heaven. Hold in your hand all those who have passed through death in the hope of your coming kingdom. And hold in your hand especially Kevin Howes, in whose memory the church's Christmas tree has been given to us. Jesus, born of Mary, be born in us today. In this holy night, Christians the world over celebrate Christ's birth. Open our hearts that he may be born in us today. 
Jesus, born of man, be born in us today. Father, in this holy night, angels and shepherds worshipped at the manger throne. Receive the worship we offer in fellowship with man, Joseph, and all the saints, through him who is your word made flesh, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Let us exchange a sign of God's peace.
As we come now to the celebration of the Eucharist, please note that communion will be distributed tonight from five separate places in both galleries and in three stations across the front of the chancel. You are most welcome to come forward for communion or indeed for a blessing. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Yes. Blessed be God forever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father. Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. All glory and honor be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who for love of our fallen race humbled himself, and on this night was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your Spirit, and lived as one of us. In this mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise.
Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his commands, grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be unto us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ thy Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of thy divine majesty, renew us by thy Holy Spirit. Inspire us with thy love and unite us in the body of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. 
God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ. The blood.
we say together our prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank Thee for feeding us with the body and blood of Thy Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him we offer Thee our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of Thy Spirit to live and work to Thy praise and glory. Amen. Would you please stand? As we come now to the blessing, it's only for me on behalf of the clergy and community here at St. Alphage and the church throughout Greenwich to wish you all a most blessed Christmas. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill and make you partakers of the divine nature. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Proclaim the word made flesh. <laughs>